So I think we can all agree that the common rooms in Hogwarts Legacy look absolutely awesome. They all signify the uniqueness of their respective houses and show off the talent of the designers who worked on them. But which one is the best and which one is the worst? Today I'll be telling you my rankings of all four houses common rooms in detail. Now I should say this is just my opinion, so if you think I'm wrong, don't hesitate to butcher me in the comments and hurt my feelings. Well, I don't know. Just just be civil and maybe a little bit nice to me. All right, let's go. Coming in fourth, and it feels so wrong, but I'm going with House Gryffindor's common room. I expected more from the famous house of Hermione Granger, Ronald Weasley, and some guy named Harry Potter. Honestly, it seems that nostalgia from the films is about the only thing separating Gryffindor from the others. However, let me make this clear, it's still a beautiful look to a house common room. I like the subtle red and scarlet that's draped throughout the walls, floors, and windows. The color in this common room is poignant without being overbearing. The lion statues are cool and pronounced, but don't quite stand out as much as some of the other houses. Nearly headless Nick floating about in the common room is a plus as is the lighting and ambiance that is afforded the students that live there. Where the house common room loses points is in creativity and uniqueness compared to the others. The others have pretty cool entrances to the common room while Gryffindor's is just hiding behind a painting. The dormitories where the students sleep is also very plain and standard. It basically just looks like a modern day college dorm at a really nice university, not one that's in a fantasy school. Anyway, I think House Gryffindor comes in last mainly for those reasons, but I can't can't say this enough, it still looks absolutely great, it's just all even better from here. Next up is House Hufflepuff's common room. As a member of House Hufflepuff myself, you can tell I'm being unbiased. Let's start with the negatives of the common room. They are mostly the same negatives as House Gryffindor's, not a lot of unique features or looks as compared to the top two. The dormitories in House Hufflepuff are much the same as Gryffindor's, with a few differences. I'm not sure if each house's common area is exactly the same size, but Hufflepuff's definitely seem smaller, so it at least has the illusion of being smaller than the others. Now that the negatives are out of the way, let's get to why I love it. One word summarizes Hufflepuff's common room, and that is cozy. It just feels very calming and relaxing in the common room, which fits perfectly with the calm nature of House Hufflepuff. This place just makes you want to snuggle in with a cup of tea and relax away. Honestly, this would probably not be the best place to get studying done. I'd be half asleep. I also love the sound of the barrel door entrance to the house. There's something satisfying about the wood rolling out for you, and the cramped circular hallways are a nice touch to really make you feel like a hobbit of the Lord of the Rings. Sorry, I probably shouldn't mix fantasies like that, but I couldn't help but see the comparison. The doors to the dormitory area are also shaped like hobbit doors, so... Like I said, can't resist that comparison. The area is very well decorated, as are all the common rooms, but what really stands out for Hufflepuffs is the hanging gardens above. They are absolutely radiant. The hanging gardens are shown throughout the walls and floors in this house. They give the feel of a botanical garden, meant to be directly comparable to Professor Garlic's classroom in the greenhouse. And really, the whole common room is basically a greenhouse for people instead of plants. This is by far the coolest feature of the common room. And of course, there are plants littered all across the common room, including some bouncing cacti. You can almost smell the nature through the screen. One other cool feature of Hufflepuff's common room is the nearby kitchen, which is just down the hall, showing the direct link between the garden and the food. Gaining the silver prize in this countdown is House Slytherin's common room. Where House Hufflepuff's common room was cozy and inviting, House Slytherin's is mysterious and yet still inviting. Its dark gothic architecture lends well to its underwater setting. That underwater setting sets a very eerie but awesome aura around the whole area. You can even go up to the glass and watch the fish and other underwater creatures swimming by. It's impressive how the common room gives off such a brooding and scary feel while still being a place I could see myself spending my days and nights at Hogwarts. It gives the feeling of walking on a rainy street at night in Victorian England without the fear of being murdered. A very cool experience to be sure. One other comparison came to mind which is Azkaban Prison without the Dementors or terrifying elements. Right from the start of walking into Slytherin's common room, you can see how cool it's going to be inside. The snake rising from the floor to reveal the door is definitely the coolest entrance of any of the houses, and then going immediately down the stairs with an interwinding slow cascade of water falling right beside you. When going to the dormitories, the feeling of Victorian England at 
night really shines with the old style steel walkways with water running along both sides of the path and big gothic style wooden doors as entrances. Not to mention the lantern styles feeling like something out of a horror book written by Edgar Allan Poe. There's more creepy and haunting statues and portraits in this house than the others and oddly enough their sleeping chambers actually look like a place that would be easier to sleep in because of the dark but calming interior. Either way it's a hauntingly beautiful place to ponder becoming an evil villain. At least that's what I'd be doing. Last and obviously not least is the best common room which goes to House Ravenclaw. This place is absolutely stunning. The transition from the golden raven who closes in on itself and then reveals an even bigger statue of a raven behind it adorned with a star chart ceiling is enough to give you chills. Everything about this looks like a five star hotel from my nerdiest dreams. The architecture of everything screams high flight and high class. Everything in the house has been meant to signify that and they did a job of of absolute perfection in that area. The windows, the furniture, the portraits, and even the location all point back to the house and its ideals. The purple, white, and gold are shown more prominently in this house than any of the others show their own colors. It is littered all over the place without feeling nauseating. It's a perfect use of colors by the designers. I also appreciate that Ravenclaw is the only house that made their restricted section more creative by having it guarded by knights as opposed to just being stairs that transform into a slide. Ravenclaw also gives the illusion of being bigger if it isn't actually far bigger than the other houses. Also, the dormitories are the best looking by far to the other houses. Some of the rooms have a very unique design where there are three beds that are adjoined with ornate windows and have curtains to draw for privacy while sleeping. What a dream it would be to sleep in that. The location of House Ravenclaw is also very cool being basically in the sky at Hogwarts which you can see out the windows in case you couldn't feel it just by the aura of the place. It even has a piano you can interact with which is more than any other house has as far as cool interactable objects. House Ravenclaw's common room makes me want to transfer but I'll stay a proud Hufflepuff for the time being I guess. So what do you guys think? Am I dead wrong or am I dead on with my rankings? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love you guys to show your own rankings from one to four of all the house's common rooms and see where it ranks with other lists, including my own. Also feel free to let us know in the comments of other future ranking videos that you guys would want to see pertaining to Hogwarts Legacy and we'll take a look at it. If you guys like this video, please let us know that as well and give us a thumbs up while you're at it. Subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to keep up with everything Hogwarts Legacy and we shall see you in the next video. Thanks guys.